Welcome back. Today we're going to discuss real estate agency. We're going to talk about the relationship that gets created between us and a client. All right, so let's get started. In this agency, there are, or in this world, there are three kinds of laws that I want to talk about. We have got common law, which is created and rules that are created by society and established by tradition or court decisions. All right. We've got statutory law, which is codified and created uh, and enacted by legislatures. And then they have the administrative laws, which we touched on on another chapter that deals with the rules and regulations that are bestowed upon a group to oversee themselves. The one that we are going to obviously be discussing today is the administrative laws of the Real Estate Commission. So what we are going to talk about is agency. And a lot of times you will hear it called the common law of agency. Now, common law, like I mentioned, is established by tradition and court decisions. Therefore, that common law can change. It can change over time. And we have had several major changes in agency laws that you probably will not even be aware of because you've come in knowing these new laws where I have seen some changes in the common law of agency and that is actually one of the requirements why, why every state requires us to have continuing ed so that you can always be kept up by educational institutions like us to tell you about new potential changes in the common law of agency. So let's get started and talk about the players or the definition of the people that are inside this common law of agency. The first one that I want to touch on is an agent. An agent is a person that is hired to represent another person. And there are all kinds of agents out there. You've got talent agents, you've got real estate agents, you've got sports agents. So an agent is not an uncommon a uh, person that you it's a good day to start. An agent is not an uncommon thing because there are many different types of agents out there. Now, the second person that I want to talk about is this person called a client. And that client actually has several different names by which you will hear it called inside of a, our real estate world. Another word they could call them is the principal in the deal. Another common one that you will hear them called, and probably this is the most common, is the seller. Or remember, there's an agent on both sides so it could be the buyer, depending on what side you're working on. So your client could be the principal or could be a seller of the property. All three of those words you will hear used interchangeably to mean the same person. Now, the relationship that is between these two people is called an agency relationship. There is a created relationship between the client and the agent. That relationship is called agency. And what you see on the screen is very common amongst all agencies out there. When you talk about sports agencies, there is an agent and their client. When you talk about talent agencies, there is a, an agent and the client. When you talk about real estate agencies, there is an agent and a client. So this is a very common structure amongst all agencies out there. 
where the difference lies are in the uh, uh, duties that are given called the fiduciary, that's a real fun word to say, obligation. That fiduciary obligation is what defines that agency. That's where the difference starts coming in. So let me explain. So you guys all know Peyton Manning or remember him as a great football star. He had a sports agent. Their relationship was an agency relationship. But what that agency relationship required or the fiduciary duties that were required is where it differs between a seller and a real estate agent who also have an agency, but the fiduciary responsibilities for the real estate agency are different than the fiduciary responsibilities between a sports star and the sport agent. That's where the definition changes. That's where the difference lies, is in the fiduciary obligations of the agent to their client. So a client is someone with whom you have agency with, all right? There is a second person here I wanna talk about. It is called a customer. A customer is a person with whom you have no agency with. So the difference between this client and this customer is this obligation called agency. And the reality of this whole job is that your job is to find a customer, someone that you have no agency with, and turn them into a client by creating agency and listing their house for sale or helping them find a house to buy, depending on what side. So that is the difference between a client and a customer, all right? And all you need to do, very simple, find a customer, turn them into a client. So let's say you're standing in line at Starbucks waiting to get your coffee and the person in front of you who you do not know is technically a customer to you. You owe them no fiduciary responsibilities, nothing. Now, you do owe them normal human things like politeness, don't lie to them, don't try and cheat them, those are all things that you should uh, expect from any human, from one human to another. So yeah, you still owe that. You, you, know, you can't be rude to them. You don't want to lie to them. But you owe none of the fiduciary obligations, which we're going to get to here in just a minute, to this person because they are a customer. So you overhear this person in front of you say, Wow, I really want to sell my house. I wish I knew a real estate agent. And you tap them on the shoulder and go, hey, my name is Raymond Modlin. I work for the Modlin Group. Uh, I'm a licensed realtor. I would love to list your house for sale. And they say, okay, let's do it. And you have created an agency and now made that customer a client. And because you have now created this agency, and you have created a client, you now owe them all the fiduciary obligations that is required by the definition of what our agency requires. And we're going to talk about them. So this is the typical setup of this system where a client comes in, where a customer comes in. All right. Now in the book, they mention this word called a transactional broker or a non-agent, non-agent. A non-agent is often you hear it called a facilitator, an intermediary, a transactional broker. They are a person who assists 
both parties without an agency on either side. Now, I will tell you, most states do not allow this. Indiana has a problem with it. Florida can do it. All right. So let's go back over here. So what I'm saying is this, and let's see if I can do this on this video. When I have a client, the most common thing is I have a client that I'm working for. When we go to closing, I am sitting on my side of the table and they call these a side because it comes from the side of the table. On this side of the table beside me is my client. We are agent and client because I have agency with that person. But watch this. Across the table from me, you are sitting with your client beside you. You are the buyer and he's the buyer and you're the agent. You have an agency relationship with him, but your client is my customer, right? I still owe them customer level stuff. I still owe them humanistic level stuff. I can't lie to them. I can't try and cheat them. I don't want to give them false information. That's what you would expect any normal human being to do when they talk to another person, right? So you see this in the form of, here's my client right here. And across the table from me is a customer. I don't owe that person any fiduciary obligations. That is your job. And you sitting on that side of the table have a client beside you. But my client beside me is now your customer as well. All right. So typically that is the scenario. There are two agents involved, one representing the seller and one representing the buyer. That is called single agency. But your client is my customer. And you, my client is your customer. Cool. What a non-agent is would be someone who represents neither person, but still assists them in completing a deal. So the most common time you see this happen is like for sale by owners. We've mentioned this before. They're called FISBOs. This for sale by owner. They may come to you and go, hey, look, Raymond, I don't need your help brokering, which is what we do. I've already found the buyer. I don't know how to fill the form out. Can you give me some advice? And I would say yes. And in essence, what I'm doing is this. I have no loyalty to either party. I am mainly saying, okay, seller, sign here, buyer, sign here, sign here, put a date there. And I represent or have no agency with either one of the parties. All right. That is a non-agent. And I cannot help either one of the people because that's what creates the agency. So they say, oh, well, thank you for helping me. But do you think I could have got a better deal? I don't know. I can't help you. I can't talk to you about it because I'm not your agent. Most states have a problem with this. This used to be a common thing that agents would do and they would charge a flat fee and say, oh, you found the buyer and you just want me to help you sign the documents. I'll charge you $500 and I'll tell you where to sign and where to date and what to do and all that. The Indiana Bar Association has had a problem with that because they would construe that as practicing law since you are dealing with a contract called the purchase agreement that you are not a licensed uh, attorney. Unless, of course, you are. 